What is going on guys? My name is John and today I'm heading over to the Charge Point HQ to meet up with a buddy of mine who plan on making a buddy charging cable. What's that you might ask? Stay to find out. So, do you see what that thing is? Yeah, it's a, it's a J to a Tesla. It's but... the reverse of what Tesla makes. So this is, because Tesla has their little adapter where that lets Tesla to J, that is a J to, yeah. So J to this, a Tesla. This is, you plug in a Tesla destination station to that and then it goes into you right in your J socket right there. No sh. No sh <laughs> he, and it works? Yeah, it works. But uh, I asked if I could show it to you. He's like, yeah, sure. Um, F that. Can I have one? <laughs> well, I, I, I think he should be selling them. Honestly, like he. Okay, so he's got an engineering background. He is um, overly, overly cautious about like. I don't want to make. I don't want to make it until it's absolutely perfect. Until I know that it's you know all the flaws are out of it. Uh, that and sounds like what an engineer would say. Yeah, and so he's he's kind of got that perfectionist thing that's that's holding him back on it. But honestly, uh -huh. this thing is that one it cracked a little bit right there because it's again 3D printed. Yeah. Um, but it, maybe no, don't make it so. It doesn't have to be this streamlined. I mean, this is great. That's no, but that, that, it, that, it could that, be bigger if no, you no, wanted no, no, it. No, 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 no. It'd be that size easy. Like this is not hard to do. Like what for him? Um, but everyone else has, you know, like uh, we have this great one called from Electron that puts it's you know a J and then a Tesla and then a cord in between, like. Would you rather carry that, or would you rather have, uh, this fits in like a pocket, dude. Yeah. This is like, you should have this. And it's not, it's not unreasonable. Just snap it right into your J thing there. And then you plug in a Tesla destination station. So that, that'd be pretty useful. <laughs> there you go. Sounds pretty awesome. I think the ability to tap into the proprietary network for Tesla is an awesome idea. I believe charging should not be exclusive to any particular type of vehicle or brand. Now, the Tesla Tap is not a revolutionary idea, but no one has come to the market with a conveniently sized adapter. If you guys want me to reach out to the person who is creating this adapter, let me know in the comments section down below. With this channel, I get to connect with awesome people within the electric motorcycle community. Um, have you ever ridden Highway 9? Oh uh, yeah, plenty of times. Okay, good. What I want to do um, uh, is uh, take Highway 9 just north of Boulder Creek, go to Bear Creek Road, and that'll lead you to the summit. Have you done that road, Bear Creek Road? I, don't, I think I skipped Bear Creek Road, so... Oh, it's so good. It's wonderful. We made our way to Highway 9, and to be honest, I never had the opportunity to ride with Morgan. So, it came as a surprise when I was trailing behind him, and man, does he love Highway 9. The dude can ride. Check it out. As we continue south towards Monterey, we charge our bikes for the next portion of the journey, which is cool because I end up charging at the Zero Motorcycle Factory. The exciting part comes up next as we follow Morgan while he builds a buddy charging cable. You could actually put everything into the controller, but the idea of having the aux is so you can buddy charge. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a feature. It's one of those things people who don't ride don't think about. 
But if you're going to ride and tour with buddy, people, you want to be able to, to, to help your friends out, which is literally why the stuff goes into the aux for us. Yeah. Because it, it makes it easier to, to, you know, do a shared trip. And it makes sense. Yeah. But, again, someone who never rides isn't going to think of that kind of thing. Exactly. And, you know, none of, the, none of the manufacturers offer a buddy charging thing. Oh, my bike's, you know, my bike's low. Can you help me out? Nope. So, right now, we are going to take my pin, which I grabbed and put here. And we are going to take the wires. Think about crimping here. This is very important in a, in a vibration environment. A lot of people try to twist the wires. Everyone's like, oh, twist wires. It's fine for non, non you know, if you, for, for house wiring or whatever. But in, an, in a vibration or automotive environment like this, you want to have it straight. The reason for that is because this is the um, narrowest the wires can ever be. If you twist them, that actually increases the, the diameter, or the circumference, sorry, of the wire, because they're getting, you know, when you twist it, that actually increases the, the, yeah. If, in a vibration environment, this is unlikely, if they were slightly untwist, and then the wires inside shrunk down and worked their way out of the crimp, and the crimp failed, that could be certain death on the road. So we want this to be the absolute smallest it will ever be, and then crush it down on that, and that way it's almost impossible for it to ever become undone. Okay, I want these facing the same direction, because it'll make life easier. We'll put it in our awesome crimp. And we use our high power hair dryer. So what portion latches onto the Anderson again in order to keep the connection? So these pins that I'm doing right now, they, you can see they have a lip on the end of them. Um, if you look at this, oh, there's a little lip right here. If you catch your thumbnail on it. So all it does is there's literally a leaf spring pointing upwards like this, mm -hmm. and it goes over and catches on the lip. And since the spring is pointing against it, it'll never pull back. So in order to undo it, Anderson, you have to get in there and lower the spring, then you can pull this out. But without right. that, there's constant pressure. And the nice thing about Anderson's is they're designed to be plugged into things and unplugged. And every time you plug in an Anderson, you see these, the springs are tensioned, the pins are tensioned, so they're pushing against each other. When you plug them into each other, there's resistance because they're they're literally pushing against each other, creating a better contact. And when you unplug it and plug it back in, it's actually kind of scraping fresh contact patches on it. So it's always constantly forcing it. Yeah, each other. yeah, and it's just it, yeah, it's very very stubborn and, and rugged. If you want them to never come apart, they hang little handy zip tie ha holes right there. You can zip tie, which is what Zero does. They put little tiny zip ties right there and there, and um, there's a lot of those you got to cut off on the zero. This one on the, the on the aux is actually held in with two small screws using this as a mounting point, so it has a fixed position to the left of the spring. If you go and wiggle yours, you'll notice it doesn't move mm -hmm. because it's held in with two screws. Good idea. So now we have our things pinned here. So we have the positive line, which mm -hmm. is now black and scary, but whatever I know what it is, because uh, you think know, negative is black, and that's why it's like, oh no. So I also have to double check because red should, if I've got red, red's positive and black's negative. Well, in this case, red's aux and black is positive because I had to reverse it for the way that we did this. Okay. It's fine. Um, now I'm going to, oh God, I'm going to do soldering. I'm going to do that the last. No, I am at that point now. Son of a gun. So while we wait for that heating up, what's the intent Switch. for having a cable such as this? The idea of buddy charging is that you have fast charging on your zero, but you've got a you've got a buddy who doesn't doesn't have ability to you know get uh, charge off of a J plug or anything like that, and they're they're stuck there. They don't want to be there for ten hours or however long it'll take for their onboard charger to uh, fill up their bike. So it literally just redirects the output from your DigiNow chargers and puts it into their battery. It just like, it pretends that it's on their bike, essentially. Mm -hmm. Just, it's literally the output, instead of going to your bike, goes to their bike. And um, that's, uh, yeah, that's how that works. And there's a, a level two buddy charger, which both bikes have to have our chargers on them, which we have done. I didn't know that was a thing until Brandon showed it to me, but literally what you can do is, um, Assuming two, in a, two bikes in the wild, and I've done this, went, went down to Big Sur, and uh, Brandon was on the FX, and I was on the SR, and the FX ran out of battery, and really, really ran out of battery. So what we did was take power out of my aux, 
literally kill, directly pulling power out of my battery and fed it into his chargers. Because our units also take DC in and re recurrent. So they're not only AC to DC, they're also DC to DC. These are really good units. Huh. Um, so it took my power out of my bike and it, through the chargers fed him like six kilowatts um, through two of his units there. And uh, that's what we call level two buddy charging. The one thing you absolutely, absolutely do not want to do ever on a zero is hook the... Um, battery to battery direct aux connection you never want to go from one aux out to the other bike's aux in mm -hmm. because that's literally putting two batteries together at different voltages uh best case scenario uh, both your charge fuses explode worst case scenario the batteries catch on fire so don't ever do that never go direct aux to aux on a bike brandon and terry did that once pretty much watertight because this is really thin all that glue coming out and the thickness of this heat shrink um yeah pretty damn solid yeah it fills all the voids cable is now finished um and it's very important to keep the uh how, how you make this wh which side goes into what uh this side in my left hand is going to go to the destination bike uh we know this because i put a little label on it says to buddy and it also has the uh enable uh, board on there with a the switch. Uh, this side of my right hand comes out of the chargers. Um, it is very important. That's that's the you know DC out that's feeding into, into uh, you know the destination. It's very important that we only only ever hook this from the charger output to the bike input. Never ever make these cables go from the bike's aux to the other bike's aux. Uh, the auxiliary ports. You never want to go direct bike to bike. Um, because the voltage difference in there will make the batteries try to flood the uh, the channels and try to e equalize. And best case scenario, you blow your charge fuses on both bikes. Worst case scenario, you got a battery fire. So never, ever, ever plug direct bike to bike batteries. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so that's why important. We charger out to bike in, and that's the way it has to go. Yeah. So we'll label those. <laughs> So that was a scary note to end on. The real question is, does it get you thinking about the possibilities with electric motorcycles? Personally, it's just another tool in the toolbox. The thing I might find most valuable is Morgan's experiences, and that I'm able to share with you guys. So for that, I am truly grateful for. Did we ever find out that charging cable actually worked?